of war once the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that there are just efforts nationwide that are taking place. When we took the voting ride for uh, uh, the freedom ride for voting rights uh, to Washington D.C. and to the Supreme Court to say before the justices and to the president and to Congress, we won't go back. We are not going to take this type of abuse. Is what it really amounts to, uh, sir. Because so many people died, fought. We have marched for over 50 years and more, you know, and so I just wanted to come today to just put my two cents in on as it relates to the suit. And I just thought it was appropriate that we are here at the Attorney General's office here in uh, the, the Montgomery, Alabama, uh, to just say once again to Attorney General Luther Strange and to Governor Robert Bentley, we won't go back. Yes, we're not going to let nobody, nobody turn us around. around. Ms. Robinson, on behalf of our charities. Yes, sir. I represent the 60 charities in Macon County who uh, were put out of uh, our major resource from our victory land, the gaming industry that we voted for, and we all voted for, and we were entitled to the revenue that we would receive from them. What's so important is that we can't go back in history. You know, history is repeating itself after the Civil War, Reconstruction civil rights were granted and taken back and it almost seems like history is repeating itself and it is in danger of repeating itself if we don't stand up and defend ourselves and speak out for our rights and we're determined to do that we are not going back. Exactly. And Mr. Patterson on behalf of 2,300 or more employees who've lost their jobs. Yes, I stand representing 2,300 employees who have lost their jobs. Uh, as the mayor says, not so much personal for myself, but there's employees out there that were working as training single mothers, single fathers, yeah. has no jobs, and has not been able to obtain a job since uh, we've been closed. So I stand ready to fight, fight, fight. That's what we have to do. And Zach, uh, you know about people losing jobs and being affected. Uh, we're fighting for voting rights, civil rights, jobs, and justice. Amen. Zach, introduce yourself. My name is Zach Carter. I'm an organizer with Alabama Fisheries Cooperative. We are a multicultural fisher and seafood worker-owned co-op on Alabama's Gulf Coast. And as Mayor uh, has just said, Mayor Johnny has just yeah. said that we have suffered directly from job loss because of Katrina, because of the BP oil spill. And, and I do want to say that I taught for three years in the Macon County School System. Oh, is that right? At Notasoga <laughs> High School. And we very much appreciated the supplementary check that we got from this race track that, 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 uh, that is being shut down by state government, which is totally un unjust. We, we stand with you, and we wish you all the, all the luck and offer all the support that we can. Thank you so very much. So we will respond to any questions that any of you may have. We're so happy that you joined us. Come on around and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Thomas Brown. I'm the uh, chair of the uh, Elbow County uh, Democratic Party. And I stand 100% behind uh, the mayor. Uh, we all should, regardless of what our ethnic group might be. If one suffer, all of us all suffer. So uh, I'm out here in support knowing that uh, our future depends on what we do now, and our future is basically in our young people. And that's basically what I'm interested in, trying to do something that will encourage young people of today so that our children and grandchildren do not have to be intimidated or suffer what we have been suffering. Yeah. Thank yes. Thank you. Introduce yourself, please. Tina Renee Aples. I'm a resident of Macon County. And I'm one of the just regular individuals, and I'm living and coming from Randolph County, we see opportunities going to other states. And this was an opportunity for our state to grow and thrive. We have to invite industry in so that we can prosper, because when one prospers, we all prosper. And so the way that things are handled needs to be reconsidered. 
we need to take a different path. And we, God has given us the opportunity to grow. We should grow and be nurtured. So I'm looking forward to changes coming in because I spent most of my time working in the state of Georgia. And I had to make a turnaround. I said, this is taking money out of my state. I have to do something for my state. And looking for jobs in this state, um, there wasn't the, the same amount, but I'm looking forward to what the future holds for this state and this country. Thank you so Thank very much. We uh, want to sum it up by saying uh, we are now in the federal court in the 11th Circuit. And while this suit originated in Macon County, it's applicable to all in the gaming industry who've been affected, who voted on this issue. More than 10,000 people across the state have lost their jobs. Recently, you saw what happened in Greene yeah. County. Yeah. So they're in the same boat that we are in. The most important thing is we voted on this issue. It was a constitutional amendment in Macon County and in Greene County. Therefore, we have filed a federal lawsuit that is in the appellate court now, and we're prepared to take it all the way, Luther Strange, to the United States Supreme Court. Back in the 60s, 50 years ago, we couldn't get justice in Alabama then, and we can't get it today, and that's why we're in the federal court. We'll pause now and respond to any questions that any of you may have in the press. Just for clarification on the, you said the threats, you mentioned threats uh, over and over with the, the sanctions. sanctions. The threat and the sanctions? Yes, the sanctions have been uh, uh, th threatened. We've been threatened by sanctions from the Attorney General against, first, first he, he threatened a, a Attorney Donald LaRoche. And then less than two hours after our appeal was filed, the, the attorney from the attorney general's office called and threatened sanctions against all of the lawyers. And those lawyers are Donald Ro Roach, Fred Gray Jr., Fred Gray Sr., and of course, James Anderson, who ran for attorney general uh, against the attorney general. But, but they have been threatened with sanctions. But threatening isn't it the court in the middle district and Judge Watkins who levied the sanctions in, in his ruling? It was the attorney general who requested it. And the, and the, and, 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 and the judge and, Watkins approved. Exactly. Okay. But we do not agree with Judge Watkins, obviously. So you, and right. that's why we have filed our appeal. But as far as a threat, it's just a legal thing that they've done. Is Let me just correct? tell you this. Uh, the lawyers uh, perceive it as a threat, as harassment, as as, as, as retaliation. As a matter of fact, attorney Fred Grace specifically relates back to the 50 years ago when he first filed his first civil rights lawsuit. Not only was he threatened with sanction, he was put in jail. So what I'm saying to you is uh, those same kind of tactics <laughs> are very, very real. And if Luther Strange did what he did to raid us, I'm sure if he if he could, he'd, he'd threaten us. As a matter of fact, when we brought this lawsuit here, and everyone needs to know this, uh, last year when we came here to file it, they first would not accept it. First of all, they didn't believe it was for real. It took us almost two hours to get them to actually accept the complaint. Uh, we filed the lawsuit. They called down to the federal court to find out if it was true and if it was factual. In other words, we have an attorney general who feels that apparently he's above the law and that citizens should not have the right to file a lawsuit against him when they feel that uh, so we judge, can't be intimidated. Just last question on a technical matter, because Judge Watkins used the term frivolous in his ruling. Is he, is it, I guess it's the middle It district. was the attorney general who used the term frivolous first. And that's what and, Judge and, Watkins and, concurred and, with. And Judge Watkins, who incidentally lives in the same neighborhood as Luther Strange, also adopted verbatimly almost uh, the words that the Attorney General used. Now, one thing we will say is that Governor Bentley and his office has not threatened sanctions or used that tactic. Uh, and, and so we certainly appreciate the governor at least uh, re recognizing the fact that this is our right and we shall not we shall not be moved in terms of being intimidated so he is, he's not done that 
Only Attorney General Luther Strange, Big Luther, he is the one who is using these tactics to try to scare us off. But we are not afraid. We're not going to turn back. We're not fighting for gambling. I wouldn't stand here fighting for gambling. I don't gamble. But I'm standing here fighting for voting rights. Yes. I will fight and die for my voting rights. And I want that's the message I want to send today, that Dr. King stood and fought for voting rights, and we stand today on his death date to say that we, too, stand and fight for the same thing that Dr. King fought for. Voting rights, civil rights, jobs, and justice. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank all Thank of you all, all so much. Thank you all. All right. We, uh, okay. um, we need, do you need uh, anyone who need a copy? Do you have your record of the actual suit? Thank you so much. All right. All right. Sorry, I was late, but we went to the wrong place. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank